Sir Anderson. Hello, Internet. Uh, my name is Mr. Anderson, and I am mean to people on the Internet. Um, with me, I have Charlie, also known as another skeptical guy. Uh, and uh, we're going to be reviewing a debate that he did with Dr. Kent Hovind. So let's get started. Go ahead, Charlie. OK. Do you want me to introduce myself as well? Ah, yeah, you should do that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlie, otherwise known as another skeptical guy, like uh, Mr. Anderson said. Um, Yes, we're going to review my debate with Dr. Kent Hovind. A uh, little bit about me. I have a bachelor's in physics and work as a business analyst. And I am looking to have uh, the foremost uh, uh, lawyer in the creation evolution internet zeitgeist help me. I don't know if that was the proper word of the zeitgeist, but it sounded good. It, so, <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, but that's, that's okay. The zeitgeist is like a worldview, like a... Um... I think you meant space. Space Geist. Space Geist. Perfect. <laughs> See, I, I don't know words. All right, so I'm going to share, share my screen. Here we go. So yeah, let's start this. And let's fast forward. We'll... Yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't think we care about the... Um, introduction. The introductions or the even the presentation portion isn't you know necessarily that interesting to me unless there's something specific in there that yeah you know. like he just had his presentation up for the whole discussion so even in the open discussion he has it up yeah that's typical of him and i uh, um typically like one of the things that uh that you'll find that kent does a lot is uh when you're talking he's flipping around on his slides yeah. um and um it's sort of something that he does where he will uh He's got sort of a script, right? And um, uh, he's, you know, he's been he's been vlogging it for forty years or something like that. He knows it very well. And he's got all these slides that go with the script, and he'll just kind of latch on to little things that you say, and then jump to that portion of the script, and then off he'll go, right? Yep. Yeah, and uh, the trick is getting him off script and thinking on his own steam, um, and that's where you can kind of, you know, score some points and and make some some progress. Right. Yep. I 100% mm -hmm. agree. Now, let's, let's see if this is. So let's, yeah, let's, if we can, let's jump to the open discussion portion. Yep. Uh, no audio is coming through for me. Is it for you? Oh, no audio coming from you? No. Oh, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because, because why would that want to work? Just share sound. I, there was an option I had to select. Uh, can you hear this? Like they're probably moving away. Yep, I would argue that. That still doesn't prove a big bang. The Bible says 17 times that God stretched out the heavens. Maybe it's proving the Bible true. The Bible says God created the earth first and then the stars, and he stretched them out into place. That's what it says. And we think, so if we see a red shift, if all the stars in all directions are giving a red shift, maybe that means the Bible's true. They're all moving away from earth. Is this the center of the big bang, the earth? because all the stars seem to be moving away from this spot. Maybe it proves the Bible is true. So I think you've, you've got some good observations. You see, uh, let's say, Tiktaalik, or I've got Tiktaalik in here, or you see uh, uh, of, of what you think is some kind of uh, um, intermediate is Tiktaalik evidence. Tiktaalik, there it is, oh, right there. They say it's coming out on land. It could be, as I said, a fish that does that normally. That's what it always does. It has to live on land part of the life, and, or maybe it goes up on land to lay the eggs. How many? It's certainly not proof of a missing link. And it would take a whole bunch more than one. And why are no animals able to do this today? Evolution says it happened in the past. We're supposed to believe it. I want to see it. Until then, it's not science. It's not observable. I'm sorry. I went over time here. So I say I'm sorry. I think you have good observation and the wrong conclusion, Charles. Go ahead. Okay, Kent. Thank you very much for that first response. Charlie. We're going to hand it back to you. Take as much time as you need to respond. The floor is yours. Yep. So, so first thing is, uh, CMB was predicted in 1948, and then it wasn't, um, it wasn't like observed until around 1964. So, uh, I believe those are the those are the dates. Uh, so, Kent, I do actually have a question for you. So, you say that we don't believe, uh, you know, we have a fossil. Uh, that doesn't that only proves something died and not that it was it reproduced right but is that uh consistent with what we observe now do we not observe that 
creatures and organisms now reproduce? Would we not expect Tiktaalik to reproduce? Is that the expectation? We find fossil. The fact that we find fossils at all, I think, is evidence of Noah's flood. Where are fossils forming today? It's not a problem finding fossils. There are trillions of them in the ground. We don't see them forming today. I think probably all the fossils we find formed in one big event called Noah's flood. Yes, it's logical to say all animals that we know of today reproduce. But I'm saying if it was a court of law and you're claiming this one fossil you found has some power that no other animals today have, then the burden of proof's on you to prove this one did have babies that were different and kept changing to different. And to go from uh, a reptile to a, a, a reptile to a bird, dinosaur to a bird or something, which is, I think, real dumb, that would take trillions and trillions of changes, not just one, trillions Absol of changes. Absolutely. It would, it would take trillions and so trillions where are of they? changes. And until, until you can prove that it happened, it's just not science. That's all I'm saying. Believe it if you want. But science is what we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. It's knowledge gained through observation. We don't observe it. We observe a dead bone, some dead bones in the dirt. That's all you observe. Science is a, a knowledge gained by observation. We okay, don't observe Bob. any animal today. Okay. So you see what I mean about the script? Yeah. Right. He, he has taken the bit between his teeth and he is running with it. Has he answered the question you asked him? No. No. I Does even sort of forgot what it was was <laughs> i bet you did yeah so this is kind of point this is this is this is like you know uh debating with dr hoven 101 which it, it, it you need to remember the question you ask him and make sure that he answers it because he's going to take it he's going to take the bit between his teeth and he's going to run with it so you know um you know what would you say uh in this situation he's just he's just rambled on what would you say to get him back on track and get him to answer your question? I'd probably say, hey, Kent, can we go back to the question I just asked? Uh, is it consistent with nature for an animal in the past who have not reproduced? Well, he's just going to say, sure, it's consistent with nature. And animals don't reproduce all the time. And you don't know mm -hmm. whether this one reproduced. See, there's a bone in the dirt. And all you can tell me is that there's a bone in the dirt. You don't know whether that... that uh, uh, that fossil had babies and you don't know whether that baby, th those babies had babies and you don't know whether or not it's related to the next one or the next one or the next one. All that you can prove is that it died. But that would assume that the past is not, does not resemble the future in any way or the present in any way. No, no, of course not. I, I, all of it, you know, everything is consistent with the, with the Bible and with the book and there was a flood and the flood, you know, and God's word is true. And, you know, and, 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 you know, by the way, I've never accepted that the past is necessarily going to resemble the future or it's going to resemble today. Maybe things were different back then. I don't know. No. Hmm. I see. I see. I see how he's going to just dodge and dodge that question. So, yeah, I guess I'm not sure how to ask that question in a way that he can't sort of weasel out of it. What was the question again? Uh, the question I asked uh, was a, a response to his claim um, that all we found when we see bones is that something died. All we know is that something died. Or the, my question was, okay, is that at all consistent with nature that an animal doesn't reproduce or hasn't reproduced? Sure, we don't see any babies that yeah. it had, okay. but we know here's, that it had to here's have how, yeah. here's, here's how I would approach it. You didn't see any of that, those things, right? Um, no. So here's 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 a couple of pieces of general advice, and I'm going to say that you know, and this is going to be true again and again and again. One fact, one question, right? So like, even when you were restating it, you restated it as like four questions, right? Um, you were like, you know, is, you know uh, that it died, that it was alive, that it had parents, that it, you know, all of those things are separate facts, right? One fact, one question, right? Right. So, you know, so here you pretend to be Kent for a second, right? Okay. So, sir, uh, you told me before that uh, when we find a bone in the dirt, all that uh, that that proves is that the animal died. Is that right? Yes. All right. But in fact, there is at least one other thing that we can prove, and that is that it was alive. Right. Yes. Okay. And now it, now it's dead but it was alive at one point, right? Yes. 
Okay. And do you think that it would be reasonable to assume, even though we can't prove it, that it was part of a population, that it wasn't the only one of its kind, that it had parents that looked like it, that maybe it had cousins or um, you know, aunts or uncles or or stuff like that, that it was part of a population? Do you think that's a reasonable assumption to make? Or well, we have no way to prove that. We, we can't that's not see the question that. I asked you. It's not the question I asked you, sir. I asked you a simple question question I asked you was, do you think that it is reasonable to assume that it was not the only one of its kind, that it was part of a population? It was probably part of a population, but that okay. does not mean, because that's what he would do. He would then go into a... Go, you know, keep going. Oh, he would say, but that does not mean that it ever produced anything other than its kind. That's not the, I'm not talking about whether or not it produced anything other than its kind right now. I'm talking about is whether or not it was a member of a population. And I think we've agreed that we can assume that probably it was. Is that fair? Yes. Probably it was. Okay. And okay. And do you think that it would be further reasonable to assume that even if this one creature didn't have any babies, that some creature of its generation within that population probably did. It probably did, yes. Okay. And probably again and going on. And if we found another creature that was very similar morphologically in the same area, then it would be reasonable to conclude that that was probably the descendant of one of at least its distant cousins or something, right? Probably, yes. He's never going to give you an answer like that. No, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I was having trouble doing arguing yeah. like Kent does. <laughs> I, I don't think yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. But you can see how you can see how he is going like absolutes like you can't prove it. And it's like, well, I don't have to prove an absolute. Right. And I don't have to prove that that particular creature is the one that gave that that had the babies. Right. All I right. need to say is like, look, this is a snapshot of a creature that existed in time at this time. Right. Or if you want to say this is a snapshot of a creature that existed, that was buried at this depth of the flood. Right. Whether right. or not you think that represents time or not. This is an example of a creature that existed at this time. Or sorry, at this layer in the flood. And then if we go up a few layers, then you're going to see a creature that's going to share a lot of more morphological cre uh, uh, morphological features but it's going to be slightly different. And you'll agree that that happens, that we find a creature that looks a certain way. And then if we go up in the same area, we go up a few layers of dirt, mm -hmm. then we'll find other creatures that look similar, but slightly different. That's what I want you to admit. I want you to admit that we see these changes. We see sorting based on small changes of morphology as we move up and down the geologic column, or if you don't like the word geologic column, we can say the layers of dirt. So I'm just writing down what you what you're saying, so I can reference it later. Yeah, of course. But I mean, that's the core of what you were trying to get out of yes. it with that that admission, right? So you just kind of you need to break it down to its fundamentals, and you need to keep after him until you get that admission, because otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to chase your tail for the entire period. Of time you have to question him right because okay. you know you'll think of something and then he'll get you know he'll get another idea in his head you'll, you'll you'll be like well but here i have another question for you and then he'll tangent you right and he'll say seven interestingly wrong things right yes <laughs> and you'll be like oh i want to get into that and then you'll go off and you'll and you'll never you never got that other one you're like well, i could prove that wrong but you never did and you never got that admission out of him that it was wrong uh, and, and that's, that's sort of his, that's his playbook, right? Is to just keep you chasing your tail and move from thing to thing and never let you get pinned, never let, let you pin him down on any one thing. Yeah. And that's because right? uh, he never firm commits to anything. We well, will. I mean, I've proved that he will, if you force it. Right? right. But you have to be very deliberate in terms of, um, in terms of the questions that you're asking him. And um, making sure that you get the answers, that you get the admissions that you're looking for so you can build on them. Okay. Right? Yeah. 
because and he will run from you for long periods of time and he you know the thing is that he's cognizant as well of the fact that Where were we? Um, yeah, so that's just some some general advice. So go ahead, hit play. Let's see what else you know happens uh, here. All righty. Growing legs and coming out on land, and there's a whole lot of fish in the ocean, a whole lot of them. Why don't any of them do it today? Why did it only happen once long ago and far away? I think there are mud skippers, right? They come I out. Don't know if you're gonna oh, say they, that. They, they, they sort of just. What was that? <laughs> so I was wondering if you were going to say that. Huh. Yeah, there are mud skippers. Uh, I mean, there are fish that that do do that today. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> it's probably a stupid thing, but I just thought I was like, well, it is true. <laughs> no, that's that's fair. Researching tiktolic, like those are very, they're, they're very closely related. Uh, tiktolic and and mud. I think that's the name. Mud skippers. Is that right, Ken? I think I think. I think, I think. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm very familiar yeah. with mud skippers. And mud skippers, when they have babies, they grow up to be mud skippers. Every time, every time. Ab absolutely, absolutely. But uh, I did, uh, I did want to uh, just sort of revisit. Uh, this isn't about the, the big bangs debate. It's not about it's. It's about ev evolution. But I did, I did want to just sort of address address something. So you said, you know, the uh, the stars moving away, that alone doesn't prove the big bang, and I would agree. Not one piece of evidence uh, would would support any um any scientific theory but the 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 uh observation that the stars are moving away coupled with the fact that we know that there is cmb radiation those two things together jointly together are are proof are proof of a big bang same yeah, thing the word with, with that Use the word proof way too flippantly. It's maybe an evidence that you choose to interpret that way, but it's definitely not proof of a Big Bang. It's another bit of evidence, Your Honor. He's got two bits of evidence that he thinks support his religion, that we all came from a dot of nothing. The Big Bang, we do see a red shift. I agree. We do think that probably indicates the stars are moving away. I, I, I would agree with that. I don't think that's necessarily the only conclusion we have to reach, but it's probably the most logical conclusion. Yes, the stars are probably moving away, the red shift, the Doppler effect. Okay. Now, maybe someday they'll find the new, another complete new cause of that. Maybe the light gets tired traveling great distances. I get tired traveling great distances. Uh, maybe there's another cause for it. But the fact is, uh, you're using the word proof, like I said, way too flippantly. This is an evidence that you've chose to interpret in light of your religion for evolution and Big Bang. Do you really believe all the matter in the universe, this is what the Big Bang teaches, everything in the universe was in a dot smaller than a period. I don't believe all the matter uh, was in a dot smaller than a period. Talker, I all the energy was. <laughs> he baited you off topic, and then he baited you off that off topic thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why are you talking about? Why are you talking about the Big Bang at all? Did you really think that you were going to be able to nail him on it in two seconds? No, I, I brought it up because I wanted to make the point that. Yeah. Not one piece of evidence supports any scientific theory. It's multiple and evidences. And just say that because you're going to be on this for 10 minutes now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, uh, and, 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 and you know what? He's running the clock on you, right? He's got to get to one hour and 15 minutes or something like that. And then it's, oh, you didn't, you didn't do it in the, in the allotted time. So I guess there's no evidence for evolution. And, Right. Yeah. That's the way that it works. No, I agree. I so, agree. It was foolish you know, of me to take I, the bait. Like, but then when he said that all the matter was in there, I had to correct him because that's just incorrect. It's wrong. No, you don't have to correct him. You know what you can do? And this is what I suggest you do in the future is you say, yeah, that's wrong, but we're not going to get into it. We don't have time. You don't have to yeah. explain why. He's doing this on purpose, right? He's baiting you off the topic and then he's baiting you off the topic of the topic don't take the bait right he still Understood. hasn't answered your question about tiktolic yeah right? i let that one go because i just thought he wasn't going to give me an answer yeah. on it yeah 
But I mean, even he's, you know, you can make him get you give you an answer on it, right? And he will eventually if you stay on him. But um, he's gonna try and 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 dodge. And you know what? He's able to twist. He's sometimes even able to twist away from me. And I go back and I look at my debates. And I'm like, oh, he got away. You know, well, far less, right? Yeah. You know, I absolutely. I hold. You know, I hold him on topic you know pretty well but occasionally yeah. very occasionally he'd still even see even for me he'll slip away right in little ways um but uh i mean ultimately i don't know let's see where you're going with this dot of nothing thing uh, let's let's hear your correction so all all the energy in the world was in this dot smaller than a period all all, all the energy of all the stars it's a pretty hot dot you know, isn't it where did Absolutely. that energy come really yeah, where did that energy come from? That's one of the great mysteries. I, it could be a god. It could it I I'm not sure. It could be a god. Or it didn't happen. Is that even an option with you? Maybe uh the universe... for the Big Bang? No. No, there's just way too too many there's too much corroborating evidence to prove the Big Bang. I thought you were a skeptical guy. Aren't you skeptical of the idea that everything in the universe <sighs> grew from smaller than a single atom? To bigger than a galaxy in a I fraction of a second. Skeptical. I'm absolutely skeptical of that. And that theory is held to the highest level of scrutiny. Okay. Well, I think you ought to be more skeptical to believe all the matter in the universe, fit, first of all, could even fit in that dot, matter, time, space, energy, everything. And what was before that? If this was 13.772.5 billion years right. ago, what was before? All right. So... He is now he is now attacked like you're in it now on this dot thing, right? And he's being yeah. very condescending to you. So um, you know, unless you wanna unless you wanna be like knocked around on this kind of an issue, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fight back if you're in a situation like this again, where he's like, Well, I think that's pretty foolish and blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> right. You need to hit back, right? Uh and you you need to, you know, go like, okay, well. Let's examine it then. You think it's you think it's foolish for 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 me to for me to believe that it's possible for all of the matter in the universe to be converted into energy and then for that energy to take up less space than you know a, 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 an amount of space that 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 would surprise you. Do, how much energy? Do you think how much space I should say do you think the energy from your morning cup of coffee takes up? Right. Right? How much space do you think the all of the energy from the sun takes up? The sun itself takes up a lot of energy. You'd agree with that, right? Right. Right. But the energy in the sun, does your coffee get bigger when it's hot? No. Does your coffee get heavier when it's hot? No. Actually, it does. Does it really? But uh, <laughs> sure, it does because E equals M C squared. Oh, though very slight. I thought you were saying okay, yeah, very slightly. No, I'm serious. A hot cup of tea weighs more than a cold cup of tea. Hmm. Oh, that makes sense. I'd never thought about that though. I mean, obviously, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. You know, the more energy something has, the heavier it is, right? Yeah. But what that also means is that matter can be converted into energy. And there, so you know, Doctor Hoven, are you aware of any particle in the world that God made that doesn't have any mass? Aware of any any particle? No, you're not aware of any. Well, that might be your problem, is that you're not aware of any particle in the universe that doesn't have mass if i told you that such a particle existed would that surprise you yes it would would it what if i told you that you've seen that particle what if i told you you're looking at that particle right now many of them are you talking about photons photons that's right what are photons sir are photons are protons that have been thrown off no protons are protons that have been thrown off are called alpha decay particles or sometimes they're called protons photons are not protons 
See, now I'm actually having to go back to my nuclear physics class and, and, and remembering this. She called them photons, my professor. Oh, okay. No, that's those are alpha decay particles, protons that are thrown off of a nucleus. Right? Photons are light particles. That's the quantum, that's the quantum particle of light. It's pure energy and it's massless. Right. Okay. Yeah, I never took particle physics. Neither did Hovind. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> neither did right? neither, neither did you, I assume, but I, I have lots of an excuse to not know about it. <laughs> yeah, neither you're right, neither did I. But I mean I just like, you know, I like science and space and stuff. But um but yeah, so and and you'll agree with me that it is possible for a, a um for a regular bit of matter to emit some of its energy and turn that energy into a photon, right? Right. Okay. And in fact, when it does that, when it emits that photon, it's even possible for some of that matter to be converted into photons and become massless energy, isn't it? Yes. He's never going to agree to that. I know, I know. Once again, I yeah. find it very hard to yeah. debate as Kent Hovind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He would say he would say no, and then and then I was going to say, "Well, sir, do you know how a laser works?" Right. Okay. Right. Yep. And a laser works by forcing different particles to emit photons, and that way they're all at the same wavelength, and you can emit a beam of coherent light. Right. Right. He would never, he so would never would, agree to that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> sir, let me make it simpler then for you. Isn't it true? You taught high school physics for third for 15 years. So you know that if I take a flashlight and I turn it on and I shine it uh, around the room and then I turn it off again, that that flashlight is now lighter than it was by a very, very, very small amount. Right. Right. Even though the only thing that's left that flashlight is, is massless photons. photons. The only thing that's left that flashlight is energy, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And yet it's lighter, isn't it? By a very small amount, yes. Yeah. So we know that uh, mass can be turned into energy. Now, I expect that you're going to tell me that there are limits on mass's ability to turn into energy isn't that right well yeah right but you have no idea what those limits are do you well i don't think that the entire universe could be in a in a dot smaller than a period on this page well i know sir but i think what we've established here is that you're actually quite ignorant so i think the reason that you think it's so foolish is not because the theory is foolish it's because you're foolish I think that you don't understand the theory at all. And I think that the reason that you can't comprehend the notion that all of the matter can be turned into energy and that there is not a limit on the amount of matter that can be turned into energy is that you just don't get it. You just don't understand the theory. And it's your ignorance that's the problem. It's not the theory that's the problem. Isn't that true? I think it's ignorant to assume that all of the matter could fit in the universe fits inside one dot. I know, sir. That's my point. That's a point on my side. I think I'm arguing like Kent would. <laughs> I think I'm responding how I, I know. But you say. see how I'm giving him, I'm giving the sass back to him, right? Like he started it. Yeah, that's hard for that's like hard for me to do. Like I don't consider myself like an overly aggressive person. Right. But I mean, like, so like we went back, right. And we're like, you know, so look, like, here's the thing. And then he's just like, well, you can't prove that everything, everything like, you know what, I'm not gonna, right. You're not able to explain it to me. So we've talked about the basics now. And mm -hmm. you don't understand the details, do you? You're not, you're not up on particle physics. You don't know what photons are. I think we made that pretty clear. Because I've had to walk you through the basics. So the fact that you're incredulous, there's two ways that that could make sense. One is that the theory doesn't make sense. And the other is that you just don't get it. That you're just not smart enough to grasp it. Or that you haven't worked hard enough to grasp it. And I think, sir, 
that it might actually be the second one. And I think that that might be partly on purpose. I think you like not understanding these things. And I think you deliberately try, you, you deliberately avoid learning about them because although you could learn it and you could understand it, that would be inconvenient for you. When's the last time, sir, that you took a serious study of particle physics and tried to understand the standard model? I have a, I have a bunch of textbooks here in, in uh, Dinosaur Adventure Land. Right. And you haven't opened any of them recently, have you? <laughs> sir, did you know that you can't learn by osmosis? Having those textbooks in your office isn't going to help you if you don't read them. It seems painfully obvious to me as a result of our of our discussion today that you have not been reading them. Fine, I'm a, I'm a kindergarten dropout, but none of this has anything to do with with uh, the all the creatures coming from a a an amoeba. Well, so you're the one who brought it up, and I, I would also note that you're also the one who says that this is part of evolution. You know, you say there's six kinds of evolution. There's stellar evolution. There's where did the universe come from? And so, I mean, are we not talking about evolution? What's evolution then if it's not this? Does it include this or not? It includes this, but you're missing the point. I think that's what he would say there. I don't want to. Right. Well, I'm missing a point that you're not making, sir. You expect me to you know, believe. Try, tell, me, tell me, what is your point then? Tell me again. You tell expect me, like, me to believe and you expect all of the public school students to be taught that they come from nothing, smaller than a period on this page, and that they came from an amoeba. Mr. Anderson, you have to think. <laughs> well, <laughs> sir, I think we both have to think. And I think... Um, well, I would say, firstly, I don't expect you to believe anything that I'm telling you today because it's not in your interest to believe it. So, you know, you're going to maintain your position despite the evidence. And I think that we know that at this point because I think we've you've seen the evidence. And you, you know will that maintain dogs don't your produce position dogs. without the evidence is what he would say there. Well, I mean, I'm not sure that's quite true because, I mean, you know, for him and I, anyways, we've been through whether or not dogs produce dogs, and I've shown you that sometimes dogs don't produce dogs, and you continue to say it anyways. I always forget how he answers that, because I called him out on that, too, that he's been corrected multiple times about the law of monophyly. Oh, well, you haven't seen my second debate with him, so... I need um, to watch that. I'll, I'll you'll, watch be, you'll be forgiven. There's a moment in there, like, so the big moment in there is um, I actually found... Uh, so you, you you remember the first debate we talked about how like cancer is an example of yeah you know yeah. uh changes of kind and he was like well you know where's one that does that on its own and survives outside the body right right where it turns out that there is a venereal disease in dogs which is actually a transmissible cancer huh. so what happened is that a um a dog got ovarian cancer or not not a, i think um cervical cancer and that cancer did something very strange it jumped and it left the dog that so it is it is 99.999 percent identical to the rest of that dog's cells right right but a piece of it one of those cells left the dog and went and started to live in a male dog and reproduced huh and then, that's really cool and I then, that. yeah i know right that's awesome. And then, well, I mean, it's and then, very terrible. Yeah, and it started to live as the venereal disease. So like in a single generation, a dog, cells from a dog stopped being part of that dog and started living on their own as single cell creatures in other dogs and are still doing that today. Yeah. So if you, you know, so if you get it, if you get a chance, like, you know, we know that dogs don't produce dogs always. We know you've been told and you've seen the evidence that dogs sometimes produce venereal diseases. Right? <laughs> That's what yeah. it's what it brings forth. It brings forth out of its vagina. <laughs> but I mean, according um, to the law yeah. of monophyly, obviously, it, I mean, it should. It still it still complies with the law of monophyly. But yeah. I mean, like the thing is, would you call it a dog at that point? It's living a very different life. It's reproducing uh, asexually rather than sexually. Yeah. 
it's you know it's single celled rather than being a multi celled creature, right? Um, it's a parasite now instead of a mammal. Like, is it a dog? Would you say it's a dog? I mean, I wouldn't, but you call yeah, whatever you want. It's, it's related a to a dog. It came from a dog. It it's, came from a dog. It's ninety nine percent dogs. Like the, genetically, it is ninety nine point nine 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 percent. It's as similar to a dog as any other dog. Boy, right? do I feel stupid though about not getting the. Uh fucking alpha decay particle thing right <laughs> I, give, oh. though I actually didn't know that I, or I, I i thought that a photon was i need to go back and review nuclear physics i had to draw all of those decay diagrams out oh and you are right you just now i'm thinking of it when you draw that you just draw oh alpha particle going off this way and then you just <laughs> draw the rest of the stuff <laughs> Uh, I felt so, yeah. I feel so stupid. I do apologize. <laughs> you know what? That's kind of another thing that um, that 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 brings up a really good piece of advice, which is you need to um, have a very short memory for errors and failures like that, because it will cloud your judgment going forward. And um, by the same token, you know, getting an admission will compound on itself because, uh, you know, having uh like like if you catch hoven if you catch dr hoven on something then like even though he's you know seems like he's listening to you like his mind is still on that thing mm -hmm. is like, what was that right and so he won't be paying as close of attention to and then you catch him on something else something else and it compounds right yep i'm 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 super bad at that if i make a mistake or something i i keep thinking about it over and over again i'm like oh come yeah. on charlie get get your head in yeah, the game yeah you got to you got to just like delete it right just yeah. be in the moment stay in the pocket right yeah. also i'm very um, like i cuz i you know i stayed after this when you hopped in at the open mic at the end and sometimes they ask me questions and i don't know the answers to them and i'm very happy to say i don't know the answers mhm mm I'm not going to sit here and that's the right thing to do. and pretend that I I can I'm an authority on this. I will say based on what I know, here is what I I I I think to be true or what I believe the study is showing or et cetera, et cetera. but I don't know at the end of the day. I'm very happy to say I don't know. Yeah, that's that's that that'll stand you in good stead, right? Or the other thing, you know, sometimes uh, Donnie will be like, "Well, but I, you know, like here's the study, and I want to talk about this," and I'll I'll just say to him like, "I don't know, I'm I'm not prepared to talk about that right now. I haven't looked at it. I don't know enough about it." Yeah, exactly. And I told him when he he did that, I said, "Well, send send me that study. I'll go through. I'll go and read it, and I'll and I'll come back and 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 I'll." Um... Yeah, he might have forgotten off to ping him again and, and tell him to hey send me that study. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, okay. Let's uh let's continue with the uh with the story. Right. For that. Where but was all this of skeptics is me accepting something that's written in a book by men a long time ago. That's well, that's foolish. This, this is European Space Agency wrote this down and probably got a peer-reviewed article published on it that said time, space, and matter all began with the Big Bang. They don't know any such thing. In a fraction of a second, the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy. For heaven's sake, if you're a skeptical guy, be skeptical of that. <clears throat> Once again, I, 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 I reiterate, your version of saying, you know, being skeptical of this is accepting something that was written in a book, a.k.a. the Bible. No, 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 no. Forget the Bible. Doesn't matter. Are you skeptical of the idea that you could fit everything in a dot smaller than an atom? That's pretty small. Everything, once again, I, I just want to make the distinction that it's energy that we're talking about. It's energy that's that that that's in the dot. And um, well, wait, wait, I, no, this, this this says I, time, space, and matter was all in this dot. It does, not just I, it energy. Looks like it says it began with the Big Bang. I think that's the the phraseology okay, well, that they use. This is commonly taught. Forbes magazine teaches it. It all came from a, a, a little dot. Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago, universe began as a tiny, dense fireball that exploded. Believe that if you want. I think you ought to be skeptical of that. I Big am Matter skeptical of it, but the, once again, the, the um, evidence supports everything that we see, observe in the physical universe, supports that theory. 
Well, you know, it does not. I think everything that we see supports the idea there has to be a, a creator who's outside of time, space, matter. He governs time, space, matter. The guy who made my computer is not in the computer running around changing the pixels on the screen. He's outside of the computer. The God that I worship is outside of time, space, matter. I don't think it supports Big Bang. It supports the idea there is something way bigger than we know, i.e. God. But see, I'm not asking everybody to pay to teach my theory in school. You guys are demanding that we teach the Big Bang Theory, which is a religion in all the public schools. Pause. I don't have a problem with religion. Okay. So this is another one of the ones that this he, he'll run to this and then he'll he'll ramble on and on about it. Um, it's a cop and, out for uh, him. What's that? I, feel, yeah, I always that, felt like this is sort of a cop out for him. Yeah. The So there's two approaches to this, right? There's the one I take or I have taken in the past and there's the one that AJ has taken. My approach has been to say like, you know, sir, we're not talking about that. That has nothing to do with our conversation. This is... You know I'm not your congressman, right? <laughs> like you don't think you don't think that this is a call to your congressman. You know that this is a debate about evolution. Okay, so then like if that's the case then like school policy doesn't enter into it. I have no interest in or ability to affect the school policy in either your district or mine and I'm not interested in helping you to promote a theory that I don't agree with. So let's leave school policy to the debates about school policy and we'll focus on the debates about whether or not the things that we like and or don't like are true. Right. Yeah. That makes, yeah. So that's my, that's, that's the approach I've taken in the past. Um, the approach that AJ has taken, which is equally effective is um, to die on this hill and just be like, we'll hold up because didn't you tell, uh, you know, on on X date, didn't you say to Atheist Junior in your debate that in fact you do want all of the schools teaching creation and that you want evolution out of the schools and in fact that you want to defund all the schools and that you are, you know, uh, you're doing everything you can to get your religion into the schools. And in fact, the thing that you've just said is blatantly false. Didn't he try Isn't to change Arkansas true? law? I believe he did. Yeah, he I was... could give you all that. Like, I've got it written down. I could give you all of the, like, um, the videos and the um, the timestamps and stuff. And you could just quote a chapter and verse to him and just yep. be like, you said this, didn't you? You said this, didn't you? You said yep. this, didn't you? So the truth of the matter is that, in fact, you are the one trying to get this taught in schools. I went I a different not. route. <laughs> I'm the one who doesn't care. Right. Yeah. I'm the one who's just debating whether or not this is true. You're the one who wants it in or out of schools. And since right now it's status quo is that it's there. Guess who has the burden of proof when they want something changed? The person who wants something changed. Right. You're the plaintiff in this courtroom. If you want it out of the schools, you need to convince me or whoever, if you think I'm your congressman, to remove it from the schools otherwise it stays because that's the way it is now yeah okay so sort of right. nail him on that all right if he says that yeah you can use either of those approaches yep all right yeah i went a different route <laughs> and, and do you think that your route was more or less effective than than that i think i kind of dodged it but i'll let you be the uh, judge sure let's see being taught at public school oh, but there's that. religion class and then there's science class right and big bang should be in a religion class so should evolution it's a religion it's not you don't observe any of it we no, can observe it, it, it is it is science it is peer-reviewed oh, science <clears throat> i know you wish that's true that people base tons of brilliant science off of and have based it off since since it's inception well, this they is standard mantra positive. that you guys go through. I know you. Yeah, he baited you onto that one again. You biting on all of the little, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The science is not a religion. Yes, it is. Oh, that's a whole debate in and of itself. You're not going to nail him on that in two seconds. You can chase yep. him on that one for a while, and he's going to change the subject. You're going to attack. You're going to you're going to go this way and that way, right? You yeah, got to he... just leave that one on the table, right? It's a religion, whatever you say, buddy. Let's talk about let's talk about whether or not that religion is true. Then I don't care. Whatever. 
Right, right. Right. Nobody cares about your nobody cares about your opinion about whether or not science is or is not a religion. The fact of the matter right. is it's in schools now. If you want it out, you're gonna have to convince us that that's the right thing to do, and you can't. Okay. Yep. Right? Religion or no. I don't care how, what I don't care how you want to classify it because you don't get to say these things. Yeah. All right, fire it up. All right, I was typing that down. You believe it, and you've got a lot of a lot of other people to believe it. There's also a whole lot of people that don't believe it. If we're going to go by majority opinion, which means nothing in any argument, I think that's a bad, bad road to go down. The fact is, it is not observable to peer see. Review and are you are you conflating peer review and majority opinion? That's what Those peer are review not is. The same thing at all. Well. The peers, Consensus. Adolf Hitler's peers reviewed and said, wow, yeah, we should kill all the Jews. That was peer reviewed to kill all the Jews. 55 million Germans went along with it. So, they did. so, they so these scientists are equal to the scientists of Nazi Germany? I'm talking oh. that majority opinion does not prove anything, and peer reviewed journal does not mean anything. An important no, scientific study who... proves, here we go, an important scientific study proves that the results of a scientific study depends entirely on where the funding is coming from. Bingo. Now that one I would agree with. I collect biology books. I got, I don't know, maybe over a hundred of them here. Uh, the, the evolutionists, it won't get, it won't get published in a peer reviewed journal if it doesn't bow down to the sacred cow of evolution. Uh, here's a picture of an asteroid. Yes, because crater. If it's peer reviewed, they're not going to agree with that. <laughs> That's why it wouldn't be published in a peer reviewed journal because it wouldn't be peer reviewed or it would be ask... and it would be deemed that this is not scientifically viable why didn't they ask me if i approved of it i would say no that's not science they only ask others who already believe that just like communist china they already you know how about majority opinion in china is proof that communism is good there's way more chinese than there are americans and you will not get a journal okay, published in, in a chinese so i kind of wanted him to go here and i was glad that he did Oh, you do you have something planned here for this? Okay, well, no, because I I know that I know that I could make him look sort of ridiculous by by uh, by comparing evolution peer reviewed evolutionary journals to totalitarian governments, and I was I, and I say I said, is that really the expectation here? That all right? Keep it keep it rolling. I want to see where if if you if you're going somewhere then. That goes uh, against communism yeah. or the leader. Does that prove he's a good guy? No. So the, the totalitarian regime in China is equal to the to uh, what is happening in the United States. It's as far as evolution is concerned, and like this idea right. that that uh, all these scientists believe evolution because there's some pressure from outside forces saying, "Oh, you must believe evolution," because there's this this bigger idea that. Oh, it's a war against God. It's something like that. Is that the idea? So well, I'm not sure what all the motives are, to the but I think, you're missing, I think you're missing the point completely. Uh, the fact is, the fact, it, it, and first, it's not true that the majority of scientists believe in evolution. I don't think you could prove that. They've done lots of surveys and find a lot. Carl Sagan uh, said 40%, uh, I think, of scientists uh, uh, believe in naturalistic evolution. Depends what you mean by the word evolution. But it, 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 take all the surveys you want. Even if everybody believes something, it doesn't make it true. Everybody could believe. We all came from a, a mice eating the green cheese on the moon, and they jumped down here to the earth. Everybody could choose to believe that. How many peer-reviewed journals are there that go against Islam or go against Muhammad? If you disagree, they cut your head off. Well, again, so the, you're, it, you're, these are all happening in, total, in places with totalitarian governments, with authoritarian okay. governments. Is it possible? I, that we have that in the in the, in the science in America is it possible it's it's got to that point where you don't dare speak out against evolution at or the you same don't same level as like in Nazi Germany absolutely well, not I think it is if if a, if a what you're in Virginia you said if yeah. a professor stood up in a college in Virginia a public university and told his students students I don't believe evolution has ever been demonstrated I think evolution is something we believe by faith and it's not part of science he would lose his job wouldn't he I. I'm not sure. I, I can't say with any definitive. A lot of them already have. Many professors have already lost their job because they didn't teach the evolution theory. They didn't believe the evolution theory. They wouldn't support it. 
Hitler outlawed opposition. He took it to another extreme. They don't quite do that here, but they'll fire you. Many journalists have lost their job writing for newspapers and articles because they chose to not publish in favor of evolution. I can AJ gave me good advice there when Ken says that to ask him what specific journalists have, has this happened? Matt, yeah, maybe. I mean, I think that that that's getting into the weeds, right? And yeah. uh, I think that I think the better approach here would be um, would be a little bit of um, condescension, actually. Um, and it'd be like, oh, oh, so the reason that your theory, um, which is, I mean, you know, you're not debating, you know, evolutionary biologists and, and, and you can't and you barely know how evolutionary biology works because Dr. Stern Cardinal had to explain to you what the five mechanisms of evolution are. But you're so smart and your compatriots are so smart that they can overturn the entire paradigm of evolution, except that and only because they're not allowed to publish their results in the academic peer reviewed journals, except that oh, they do yeah. publish, except that they do publish in their own little journals. But then nobody takes them seriously, except for a few people like me and Dr. Dan and, you know, people like that who absolutely rip those things apart and make them look foolish. So, I mean, like, you know, look, sir, they could publish. And in fact, there's plenty of money in young earth creationism. Don't tell me there isn't. You could be doing your own studies. You don't, you know, you grift and you, you, you live high off the hog and, you know, you got a whole bunch of people building a, a theme park for you. I mean, you know, you've got, how many acres of land? I don't know. Sell some of it and fund some studies and publish the results then. If you think you're so confident, right? Publish them in your own journal. Nobody's going to stop you, right? So it's not peer-reviewed. So what? Go and publish it. If you think the ideas are so great, then put them out there. Put them out there and let's see what academia thinks. Because I guarantee you, if you let me, even me, get a hold of any one of your ideas like the canopy theory which by the way is like the dumbest thing that i can think of that you believe they rip them apart they rip them apart in seconds they rip them to shreds i do this for fun i rip you apart yeah. i rip you <laughs> apart every day right we <laughs> just sit here and we just shred you your arguments are not up to the level of sophistication of evolution evolution has got so much much more of a robust backing than your theory like it's not i'm not i don't mean to rip on you like i i don't mean to i don't mean to be cruel but you know to suggest that there's this conspiracy and that that's what's keeping your ideas from being published they're being published we're taking your ideas seriously as you express them anyways they're just not very good okay i'm so i'm starting to see the thing i it seems like from like the overarching uh, ideas behind your advice here is that I need to be a little bit more aggressive with him and not let him okay. sort of walk over me, which. Yeah, he, he, is, so there's two big things that you, you need uh, I, that I would take away from this conversation. The first one is you cannot bite at every little thing that he waves in front of you, where you're going to just spend the whole time chasing your tail. And the second one is that when he condescends to you and he starts, you know, using words like dumb and stupid and all those sorts of things that you have the right to hit back, you know? And I mean, you can't go so far as like Wade the wizard did uh, where, you know, he started belittling him and, and like insulting him and, and uh, you know, and Donnie got mad and like kicked Wade off like the stream. And so like, you're never going to be on the stream again. You got to keep it respectful. Right. But like, if he disrespects you, you know, you can push back and be like, you know, yeah, that's that's not true. And, you know, like, look, uh, I don't think your conspiracy theories are going to fly very far here. Right. I, I've I've seen no evidence of a conspiracy. You know, you can believe that as, as you always say, you can believe that if you wish, but publish them somewhere else. Then nobody's stopping you. I'd be interested to sit to see a robust mathematical model that supports your theories. You know, it look. Uh, there and there are creationists who publish those things, is it? and 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 people take them seriously, like Dr. Right. Carter or Dr. Uh, Jeanson or Dr. Uh, um, 
uh, starts with an S. What is it? Are you talking about the guys that um? Hey, they're guys from AIG. You're like like there's there are PhD geneticists and and people who who do publish these things, right? I mean they they don't have the the respect of the community, but they're in the community and no, and yeah, they absolutely. do publish, right? And have. And Donnie and I have from about those you know, accredited accredited well, sure, yeah. Sanford, <laughs> Doctor Sanford is is the third. Well, you know what? And uh, but I mean, but sir, you're not in their league. Yep, I see. Right. I think I get what you're going for. Yeah. And and I only say to do like don't do that all the time because it's not yeah. going to make you look good if you're always on like full bore right it's only when he when he turns it on first right you're reactive you're not you know you're not being aggressive to be yeah. aggressive and then and then if he dials it back you dial it back right and you go back to being friends and you treat him with respect it's very important you treat him with respect especially if you end up having to say something mean to him like you know in my second debate you'll see like i yell at him at some point um that's because he's not answering the question and you know he's deliberately uh just yeah. trying to dodge it and i'm like you know you need to answer this question um you know and then but then i'll go back and i'll say you know look there's no hard feelings here like you know i'm i'm showing you know i'm gonna show and i'm gonna show I'm, I, I call him dr hovind i always do um because you know, i'm gonna call him what he wants to be called i'm gonna show him the respect that he deserves because he's still a person and he's still you know this is a formal debate and, and all of those things right yeah um I, but I do. I no do reason have, to be condescended to. I do have issue calling him Doctor Hovind. I probably shouldn't, but I, I, I just do. Yeah, do, do, you know what? I'm. I think I'm the only person who does actually call him. I, and I, I, I call him, it, it irritates some people that I. I do call that. him Kent or Mister Hovind. I mean, I'm not gonna. And I, that's what he, that's what he's used to, right? So it's fine, right? But like for me, it's just it's a because I am I am by nature somewhat aggressive when it comes to these things and so it's um it's an apology let's say yeah i get my no, I, I, like, you're sort of like okay i will grant you this one thing sure so, sort of, sort yeah of thing. but by the same token i will hold you to a standard where i expect you to perform at that level and if you don't then i will hold your feet to the fire and i will be disappointed in you for not you know <laughs> right. if you want to be a doctor and you've got to show me then you better act like one, yeah. right? He, you he better. Said he's gonna send me. He, he said he's gonna send me a copy of his uh, of his uh, creation uh, seminar, and I haven't seen it in the mail yet. I don't know. <laughs> well, do you? Does he have your address? <laughs> no, and he never will. But he said I'll send you this, and then. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you really care to, you can find I the whole thing for I'm, free. I'm, I'm, I'm messing. I just found it funny that he offered to send it to me. <laughs> Oh no, he'd he'd like nothing better than to send you his DVDs because he, he's also he, invited me down to Dinosaur Adventureland. Um, well, he he invites it. You know, there's actually a few people who've taken him up on that. No, you know. I swear to, uh, I'll tell you, I'm not going there by myself. <laughs> yeah, uh, Grayson, uh, based theory, uh, who's like a you know frequent debater in this space um was the first recently to go down there he did go down there and uh you know can't treat him real nice you know fed him put him up let him stay the night and had a little uh, uh a live debate with him and then jackson Rowe, i think a few maybe last week or something like yeah, that Yeah, he was there when i was de when i had my this debate with him there you go yeah i i, I yeah. just I, I i don't know it just seems seems ugh, sketchy i don't know i don't want i don't want to go by myself <laughs> I don't blame you. I, I, uh, there's been, there's been issues. Oh no. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the reason why I don't want to go. There's too much drama. And once again, I just do this for fun. I'm not, you know, yeah. I don't consider myself in this space, but I guess I am because I've done it now, like three times <laughs> debate, debating this. Yeah. Have you, and, and what's your next debate with Hovind uh, going to be on? So, it's going to be the end game to this. I So we've done two. We've done like an arc and Donnie said he likes to do three. Yeah, one, he two. likes the trilogies. Yeah, yeah trilogies. So we're going to do the third one. I'm going to do a podcast with Donnie. Uh, we're just going to talk. I There's a part of me that's like, oh, I would kind of like to be like in the space. Like a little bit, like sort of like be like someone who like knit like, I don't know. <laughs> part of sure. my I mean, you know, you can, you can. 
uh you know you can debate some of the different people what's the what's the podcast with donnie gonna be on? oh just uh donnie like he just record and then he releases it in a video on on standing for truth it's not like a yeah but what's the what's the what's the topic because it's a, it's gonna be a debate it's a debate don't think we, of it as, as a podcast it is a debate. we haven't decided on the topic yet i thought it was just gonna be more of like a conversation but that's well what do you, I mean, is it going to be a conversation about any of the topics that, you know, classically are creation evolution topics? I thought it was going to be more general, like religious, like him interested in my um, religious beliefs and, and, and sort of like that. That's what I. Was maybe, thinking. maybe, maybe that's what it'll be. Um, I know I had a conversation with the Sam Redefined Living on, I, I don't know if you've interacted with that guy at all. Well, don't if you can help it. Um, you know, and don't, uh, you know, don't give that guy a bunch of, uh, uh, slack cause you know, he's a bit of a troll. Yeah. It's, I, I've got a debate. I think we're trying to set it up with a guy named T-Rock. <laughs> what are you and T-Rock going to debate? I think probably the same, the same thing. I, he, T-Rock, I seems like a nice guy, but I don't think he knows what the hell he's talking about. Um, and, uh, you know what, let's, uh um we can keep talking but let's wrap up the recording here uh is there a whole bunch more there probably is oh Give yeah me, it's like is there four a good hours. part you want to get to is there a good part you want to get to uh i mean here it like it, all, the debate only goes to here i think this is sort of the main thing of it and then it's just a lot of repeating um because i think we've kind of we've kind of identified the main problems here and yeah it's, it's yeah, one of the classic they, they... like it's the chasing your tail thing right where he'll you know, he'll dangle these, he'll say, like I said, he'll say six interestingly wrong things where you're like, I know the answer to that, that one. I can, I can get you on that, but then he'll dangle something else and you'll just, you'll keep meandering. Right. And then the other thing is that he'll start, he'll get on his pulpit and he'll start with his script and it'll just be script. Right. And you don't know how to derail it and get it off that. And you need to come up with questions that you want answers to that you can insist on those answers in order to, you know, specifically drive your agenda. That's yep. my advice. Understood. Understood. I will stop sharing the screen or yeah, I'll stop sharing. All right. Well, there we go. Internet. Um, <laughs> that was a debate prep of sorts with uh, another skeptical guy and uh, me, Mr. Anderson. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Yes. Be well. <laughs> now, how do we stop the recording? <laughs>